Sarah Maurer, I don't know if I have to introduce her to this audience. She's a very well-respected fashion critic, uh, what we call uh, an A-list journalist. She's well known <laughs> uh, for razor-sharp uh, prose, famous for not always smiling, but always asking exactly, <laughs> exactly the right questions. <laughs> Um, she, um, she probably, uh, I think when a designer uh, wakes up after, um, after the show, uh, she's probably the one, uh, well, he's the one or she's the one, the designer that is, goes to style.com and reads what she has written. I think that's always a, a first time or a first thing to do. Um, she still has a column in Japanese Vogue, writes a lot, and uh, has always been a fervent fan of young fashion talent. Uh, we have a few things in common. Uh, we both s used to shop at Helmut Lang <laughs> and we both met Marta Magella. <laughs> no. Um, we're going to do this through an interview, so come and sit by me. Yeah. I should probably, is this going? Yes? Okay. Yeah? Okay. Um, you're also very well known for your very inspirational work at New Gen. Maybe you should try and tell us and explain us what New Gen really is. Yeah, it's very complicated. Uh, through, through my interest in um, interviewing and discovering young talent over 25 years, um, I sat, began sitting on the New Gen committee um, probably 12 years ago or so. <coughs> um, New Gen in London is um, it's a, a scheme um, which was set up by the British Fashion Council in, in response to a crisis which was looming in the early 90s when um, there was an e economic crash and it seemed that our young talents weren't going to be able to show. So it was a pot of money put up by the British Fashion Council to, to enable people like Alexander McQueen to at least have a small show. Um, and since then, uh, 10 years ago, it began to be sponsored by Topshop, um, um, who in the beginning just donated money to designers. Um, and then it grew into um, to the point where Topshop actually wanted to, to have its own collection shown in London Fashion Week. And we as journalists thought, no way. <laughs> no, no way is a, a high street store going to show during London. Um, and then um, they had the idea that perhaps if they, gave, they offered to, to build a, cat, well, t a tent, it was at that point in Berkeley Square, and then give the space to some new gen designers to show them the following day. So we thought, mm, as an experiment, okay, we'll let them do it for one season. And now, I mean, 10 years on, it's turned into, it's snowballed into this incredible um, platform for young designers. As you know, they take a huge venue and, and it's, a, it's one of the backbones of, of Fashion Week. But to cut, cut a very long story short, I am now the, um, the chair of the New Gen Selection Committee. You probably get so many people applying. Yeah. Can you talk more about that? Because I think we had something like, well, we had a thousand people looking at the website. Um, the people who, who qualified, who met, who met the um, conditions, the entry conditions, which I, I think that you have to be you have to have been in business for, I think, two years and to have a couple of uh, stockists, uh, technically, to be able to apply and um, to have a business based in the UK. Yeah. Um, the ones who actually got through to applying uh, this time, I think it was an, uh, over 150 designers that we looked at. Yeah. How long do you actually support them? Is there, do you do this three, four seasons, five seasons? Is it? Well, the thing about New Gen is that it's grown all organically. Um, what's I think what's great about us in, in London is that we've come from being the underdog and um, we've always got together in small groups and thought, hell, how are we going to respond to the way things are changing? So um, what we've learned is that um, sometimes when young designers start, it, we shouldn't just bung them on a catwalk and let them get on with it. Um, we have an exhibition, started off with an exhibition in London where they can show on a rail, sell on a rail, and step by step they go through that to presentations and maybe they 
divert out. We, we, they don't go any further, but if they're good, then they can progress onwards. Maybe we're sharing a show with somebody like um, Simone Rocha did with uh, Jackie Lee last time, and Mary Catranzo actually s shared a, a, a catwalk with um, uh, Mark Fast when she began. Um, and then if they shine there, then they will go on to their own show, maybe for two seasons, but essentially um, you can't get more than five seasons, and that's for exceptional people. You also help them, I mean, with their back office, with their production. Yeah. Uh, you, you, s you, you bring them in contact, you network yeah. well, for it was them. It was interesting talking to, uh, listening to, to Lapo because, um, as I say, responding to, to needs, because um, I, go, I made it my business to go out and, and talk to designers in their studios and listen to what they, they needed, and we realized that actually the problems were... London, London can't just be a, a, a platform, a showcase. It, it, in order to stop um, designers going out of business three seasons after they've got on the runway, you have to be able to put in place um, people who can advise on accountancy, cash flow, um, on uh, production, merchandising, um, and you have to help them to introdu be introduced to 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 the marketplace. So. Um, one of the <laughs> brave steps I think we took was to, was to decide to take the designers to Paris, and the uh, funding was take was was has been achieved um, from the UK trade export people, and um, um, I think the mayor's office. Anyway, we take we we've for about five seasons we've been taking a, a group of twelve uh, sorry twenty designers or so to a showroom in in, in Paris, and because. I'm at such an advantage, advantage, um, uh, advanced age, and I, I seem to know a lot of people in the industry. I've invited all the editors and all the buyers I know personally. I wrote personal letters to them in the beginning and begged them to come to, to see our designers um, and introduce them personally. I mean, the more I know about fashion is the more I realize how personal this, this, this industry is and how you have to be able to have a conversation with important people. I mean, usually when designers go in, they're like rabbits in the headlights. You know, you've, got, you've got the, the head of Bergdorf Goodman <laughs> standing in front of you, or Anna Winter, and you've got to explain yourself. Um, but we've realized that actually that it's like being on a fast track. It's, it's a, another kind of learning that um, has to go hand in hand with the design. So, um, so all these guys have, have grown up that way. And, and the other thing I think that's amazing about London, and I don't see anywhere else, and I'm and I'm really happy to see this, is that um, there's a camaraderie amongst yeah, the, you, you amongst the that kids. Yeah, you mentioned yesterday. I would never think that in Belgium this could happen, that people actually sh share their... Well, there's strength their in numbers. If you're, you know, you can't do it alone. You really can't do it alone. Um, I couldn't have got where I am <laughs> without people being generous and helping me, and I think that's just a lesson in life that you you need to bring yourselves up and you need to be part of a movement because, I mean, if, as a journalist, and you know, I'm sure, you're all, always scanning the horizon for what new young people are going to say. It's no good. You just can't spot them even now on the internet. I mean, if you need to see them in a, in a group and to hear them speaking with one voice and you can't kind of sing with one, one voice if you're actually not speaking to one another. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, and so when this process, th when, when this intense week happens in, in, in Paris, when, when the kids are all selling or not selling, they keep each other's morale up. And, and sometimes, you know, people do get envious of one another, but they learn from, they, they think, oh, God, maybe I could do that next time. And so I think it brings everybody up to, to, to work together. And, and when people misbehave, I tell them off. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you have to have some rules, and you can't just be. It's it's not it's not that we're we're infantilizing designers. It's it, we're not. I mean, I, I do personally enjoy helping designers, but when they go wrong or if they step over the mark, like saying, "I don't want my my collection next to him," um, it's like, "Okay, babe, out." <laughs> do you feel that there's interest again in in new names because from the retailer side, I mean? Uh, yeah, I actually do because, and as you know, these things go in waves. Um, what's what's really interesting? We're now in in London. There are there are store groups coming from China, and as they are everywhere, we've got people shopping like crazy from Asia in London as well on the streets. But um, what they're looking for 
is young innovative design designers because um, a, a store group like IT, which um, has picked up a hell of a lot of our our, our kids, um, they have to have something which contrasts with the multi with the um, own brand stores. So, you know, Chloe, Celine, Dior, Louis Vuitton, they all have their own stores. So they have to find something different to put in their multi mark stores. Um, and not only that, I mean, because of the internet, their customers who are young know who our designers are and want them. So there's, there's the, you know, the kind of all the barriers, all those barriers of, are kind of slightly falling. So yeah, I do, th I, I do think there's interest in the new. What would you recommend to people that graduate here in, in Antwerp and to Belgian designers? We call them Belgian designers, but sometimes they are not Belgian. <laughs> but uh, well, reach out and help each other. It's London has only. I was really surprised to hear Agnes say yesterday she thought that London was a kind of Valhalla. I, I was, I was so um, touched to hear that because we we felt that we were underdogs, ten ten or fifteen years ago, and we did have a generation that did not help one another. Um, if you look at the culture that was around when Alexander McQueen and Hussein Chalayan came out of St Martin's, they designed in their own cubicles in school and they didn't want to speak to one another and they were all scared they were copied one another. So that generation sort of had <laughs> didn't stand on its own two feet. I mean, McQueen got picked up by, by, by Gucci Group. Um, but I think now, I, I really do think that the only way of, of, of hitting critical mass is to, is to cooperate and not wait for a big mother to come along and, um, and, and pick you, you know, pluck you. <laughs> Pluck you out and 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 favoritize you. You've 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 got you've got to do it for yourselves. What what what's an issue here in Antwerp now? And people discuss about it once in a while. Is that do we need to add like during the fashion study and even in the master? Do we need to add you know a kind of economical side, a managerial side to it? Sh do we need this? What's your idea about that? Well, I'm t in two minds about it because, I mean, I, our, our fashion education in the UK, as here, I think, comes from art schools. The tradition is not is not fashion and business. And I think you're at, you're at university a very short time, so, so perhaps it's asking too much to force designers to study business as well. Um, but I do think that there should be specialist courses for people whose pathway will be on the business side, um, and that the, 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 the designers who really work, who really get on in life, are you know partners who are one's creative and one's uh, one's more business minded. Um, so if there could be arrangements made between a technical college and uh, the art college, and there was, you know there could be collaborations between the two, perhaps that that would work. And I'm always I'm always saying that's what should happen. In London, and I know, I know in America there are there are schemes, MBA schemes, which um, uh, are partnering partnering with um, design schools to produce um, understanding on both sides. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Thanks.